Hi, I'm Brandy, and in this video, I'm going to review rolls and roll variations. Used mostly for safety, rolls are also very useful for just covering distance. They're especially good for use in going up, going down, moving across obstacles, or even through them. You'll see that the majority of this video I demonstrate on a hard surface. That said, when you're a beginner, please use soft surfaces like soft dirt, moss, grass, carpet, mats, or anything else that's going to help protect your body until you have the techniques down. Because we expect to use our rolls and parkour for taking impact and keeping ourselves safe on very hard surfaces, it's very important to understand the path and direction of rolling. The forward roll is going to be on a straight line, however, you'll see that the path is actually from one shoulder to the opposite hip. Doing the roll technique this way keeps us safe by avoiding most bony impacts and crossing the spine once, if at all, while also using the most padded surfaces of our body, from the scapula on one side to the opposite hip and crossing the spine once. You can also see that even though it's diagonal, the roll itself is straight along the line. Even if you're inside or on a soft surface, be sure to always check around for any hazards that you might roll over or run into. Remember, a lot of your body is going to be touching the ground very soon. We're going to start with the exit to perfect it so that you can maintain momentum while not making any injury. Sit down, choose the shoulder you're going to roll over, and take the opposite foot and tuck it in. Your aim is to get the blade of your foot against the ground and have the other leg extended out. What this will do is help teach you how to get up to your feet. Take your hands and put them around your knee. Putting the other foot down, push yourself to your feet, much like an inside monkey. This is going to make sure that the end of the roll is smooth and nothing gets smacked on the ground. When you get finished, make sure to lower down in the same way. The traditional martial arts style of roll usually dictates that the shin is against the ground and that there's a slower push up to the knee and the outside of the ankle. For us in parkour, this is not so great. Rolling up to that area of the body means that the knee might impact, the shin can definitely impact, and definitely the outside of the ankle, which, as you can probably tell, is not going to be very nice or very effective on hard surfaces. Avoiding the pitfalls of this figure four position is why we use a more open and staggered foot placement. That said, another common fault might be to kickstand and use the wrong leg. We use the opposite foot from the shoulder we roll over to get our foot underneath us as quickly as possible. If instead you're using the opposite side and letting your leg be straight, you can see how this sort of kickstands and stops the movement. So when you're doing this, be sure that the leg on the opposite side of the shoulder you're using is the one that's getting underneath the body. Once you understand this goal, begin to use it slowly to get up and lower back down to the ground, making your main focus to get the blade of your foot on the ground and not touch your knee or your shin. Be sure to use your hands to help you do this. If you're finding it difficult to get your foot on the ground, try to cue yourself to take your toes to your shins. Pulling your toes up to your shins as you exit the roll makes it very hard to touch anything but your feet down first. When you first start the practice of getting up and going back down, you won't have much momentum. But as you get more comfortable and confident, start to add more of a rolling back at the start of the motion. This does a few things. One, it simulates an actual roll, and two, it helps you actually find the path on your body that's going to be the least painful and the most effective for doing this safely once you add the beginning to this entire roll. Even just getting upside down means you're already more than halfway there. If you do find yourself kickstanding during this, be sure to consciously stop, fix it, and then get up. Once you feel comfortable doing this and letting your foot tap above your head, you're probably ready to work on the beginning of the roll. To begin, crouch down with your feet parallel. For now, don't worry about leading with one foot or the other. We're going to start parallel as if we took a landing that needed to be absorbed. Next is to establish which shoulder you intend to roll over. Keep in mind shoulder does not mean the front of the shoulder, it means the scapula or the back. When ready, you place your hands down to the opposite side with them together in this motion. This is going to help you absorb the most impact and also give the most resistance after the initial acceptance of the ground. 
You can see here that by putting the hands too close, you're too tight, and too far, you're too spread out. Your hands should be far enough away that you can lean onto them, but not so close or far that you're not in good control. Notice too that by doing it this way, the shoulder and arm points directly between the widespread knees. This is exactly what we want to set up for a good roll. The next step is to protect the head by pinning the chin to the shoulder on the same side you're putting your hands. This position should be like you are looking behind you or someone is calling your name behind you. What this will do is put your arms and hands in between your head and the ground. Some people do teach the head position as a, a tucked chin, and sometimes this can work. However, if your hands slip out, you don't have anything between your head and the ground. If instead we pin the chin to the shoulder, now we have all of these structures, our arms and hands, in between us and the ground. So even if we slip, we still have something to bolster us between that impact. So, now we have the initial setup up to the next step, which is to get closer to the ground. We prefer to do this by just bending at the elbow so that the forearm is on the ground. You may be familiar with the creating a wheel or a circle for martial arts, even by diving into it. It doesn't work so well on hard surfaces or concrete, especially if you're considering coming down from a jump or a slip. It also doesn't help with a proper dive roll where you catch with your hands as if they were your legs for a landing. The final step is to push with the legs so the hips come over the head. And then, of course, executing the proper exit of the roll as you've already practiced. Let's see that a few more times with the steps all together. Step one, crouch. Step two, hand place. Step three, head out of the way. Four is get closer. And five is hips overhead. Even though you want to practice slowly at first, some momentum will help with this. One, two, three, four, five. You don't want so much that you're out of control, but you do want enough to make it a little bit easier to get around. One, two, three, four, five. Especially since you're doing this with not much momentum, it's important to learn how to push away from the ground as soon as you start to absorb. Even if everything is perfect and you absorb from the arms and bend them, if there's no push, there's still an opportunity to hit the head. Be sure to use an aggressive push, not only to help you rotate faster, but to help push your head away from the ground as you go over. If you're not quite sure how to do this, or you feel like you want to get stronger at it, try what I call roll push-ups. This is just getting into the initial roll position, and instead of actually rolling, just working a very aggressive push up after a controlled lower down. Of course, because eventually you'll have both sides of your roll, you want to make sure you do your roll push-ups on both sides as well. If you're having a hard time convincing yourself to get your hips over your head, there's something you can try. Keep in mind this is not a good safe roll. This is just a progression to help you get comfortable with getting the hips over the head. Start from the knees and extend the arm of the shoulder you want to roll over while planting the hand next to your head on the other side. Be sure not to take a nap and put your head down, but try to hold it up off the ground. From there, you just push from one foot and you can gently roll over. Because this progression is done from the ground and already in contact, it can be done very slowly with much control. And you're not in very much danger of actually smashing your shoulder while also getting the benefit of feeling the same motion that you would in the roll by getting your hips over your head. Make sure to try and practice your exit correctly as well. If you've gotten the last progression down and still can't quite get yourself over your head, you can also try this. Taking that forearm that you put on the ground, imagine it cannot move. Don't pull it up, and by simply just unbending your legs and lifting your hips, you are going to be forced to roll over. Another common fault when first learning rolls is the infamous barrel roll. Here you see, instead of my hips going over my head, I end up rolling along my back, aka my entire spine. The reason this happens is even if you set up forward with the knees nice and wide, at some point after the setup, you're allowing your knees to turn to one side or the other. This is aiming your hips directly toward the ground and making it pretty much impossible to get your hips over your head. To avoid a barrel roll, you have to become aware of what your knees are doing before you commit to the roll. Here I set up correctly, but then I can feel that my knee is starting to point to my other knee. Instead of committing to the roll and letting it happen from here, 
I make sure to put my knee back outside my other arm before I commit to pushing my hips over my head. This may take a while, but if you stay focused on it, you'll definitely get it down. When you have the roll down on flat, it's time to start adding a small jump. This can be from in place or off a short obstacle. Avoid jumping into a hard stop and then transitioning into your roll if you can. This is a progression, but as soon as you can, you want to make sure you're transitioning fluidly from the landing into the actual roll. To help like this, you should land where you have to actually lean forward and catch yourself. Jumping and then landing in basically the top of a roll push-up can be really helpful in learning the right position to help you stretch out enough to do the roll properly. Over time, you'll find that the bigger the jump, the more you have to stretch your body out horizontally to make sure you can transition smoothly into a roll. Eventually, you'll be able to use your roll after many techniques and in different ways. Now let's take a look at the side roll. Eventually in parkour, you want to roll on all sides in all directions. This roll is really great for obviously rolling sideways and for seeing a target while you do so. Like the forward roll, you're going to start from one shoulder and travel mostly to the opposite hip. That said, you may touch anywhere from your lower body when you actually touch the ground. The setup for side rolls is very similar to forward rolls. The only difference is being the hands are on the side of the shoulder rolling too, while the head is still to the opposite side, and the eyes are going to try and track a target directly in front to try and keep the right plane. Hand position will be exactly the same as in the forward roll, only directly to the side of your body. Be sure to absorb and also push with the arms while making a point to lift the hips as your arms go down to make the rotation happen. End by rolling directly to your feet, as always. You may find yourself barrel rolling to your knees trying to do this motion. The problem here is that you're not getting high enough on the shoulders to allow the roll to actually happen, or not having enough momentum. While silly looking, to get used to the position you need to be in in your roll, you can play with it statically by just getting to the top of your shoulders, or doing candlesticks to try and feel out the top of your shoulders to make sure you know exactly what you're trying to aim for when you do the side roll. At the end of this video will be a drill to help you gradually move your forward roll to sideways. Finally, we'll be taking a brief look at the backwards roll as well. This is probably the hardest roll to learn, so it's recommended to learn it after you're already familiar with a couple other rolls. What's nice about the backwards roll is it can be in place of a bounce back or break fall if you need more than just those things. Like before, start on the ground and practice getting your hands placed where you need to by your head. This is the exact reverse of the forward roll, and this drill is actually the same one you might use for that, with more focus on getting your hands by your head, because eventually you will be needing it to support so your head and neck does not get crushed by the rest of your body. As you work this drill, your goal is to keep your palms flat and ready to push away from the ground to help protect your head and neck. Start adding more momentum and more effort as you go, and then start to try and lift your hips to the sky. Doing this will allow you to help get your hips over your head and require less strength from your arms in the push. If you're ready, you can just go for it, but do note without much momentum, it's going to be very hard to actually get to the feet. Because of this, even if you're a bit trepidatious, try to add a little speed to help you with this roll. If you want a drill that's in between the rock back and the full roll, you can also go back to the straight arm variation for backwards. Whatever shoulder you're rolling over, that's the hand that goes straight. This time, the hand's going to go on the same side as that straight arm to help push your head out of the way. Like all these progressions, not having much momentum might make this kind of weird. So, focus on the hand placement to really protect and push your head off the ground, and do your best to get your hips up as you go over. Once you feel pretty good about this, it's definitely recommended to do a progression where you're adding more momentum whether that's from your feet or starting from sitting down. It should be said that for every roll, you're going to find the way that works best for you. You'll see here, for me, I use one hand primarily to keep my head off the ground and rely on my shoulder and upper arm to pop to my forearm to get back to my original position. This is basically me reversing exactly my forward roll style. Ultimately, whatever you find works for you to keep you safe and away from pain is going to be a good roll. Finally, it can be super helpful just to do a forward roll and then directly reverse it. This allows your body to feel what it just did and try to mimic itself in the backward direction. Rolling is perhaps the most technical and perishable skill in parkour. This means you're going to need a lot of practice. 
Using this clock drill, you'll be able to practice not only all sides, but all directions in a continuum of rolling that should help you address any issue or any situation you might have where you need to use a roll. Keep in mind you want to do this slowly over time, and also be sure to practice both sides for each variation to have as much adaptability as possible. Have fun with your practice, practice often, and please be safe out there.